One last topic, my friend, uh, which is where you and I first connected in the world of space. Uh, congratulations on Starship 3. Uh, amazing, amazing flight. Just really spectacular. And we all saw uh, a Falcon 9 launch from Vandenberg last night. Uh, so that was great. And uh, oh, yeah. um, uh, just, uh, again, thankful for the work you're doing. You know, I, it's fascinating because I grew up at the late stages of the Apollo and into, into the uh, into the uh, uh, shuttle program, and I can't imagine that any government would be pushing space as rapidly and dramatically as you are. And so, um, uh, thank you for what you're doing there. That's all I can say. Uh, absolutely. Well, I mean, the, the, the goal of SpaceX is is uh, it's, it's just a, a much bigger goal than any any government program, which is to um, uh, rockets and spacecraft that are capable of making life multiplanetary. So, you know, I mean, step one is actually having that as a goal. If you don't have that as a goal, you're definitely not going to achieve it. Um, if you have it as a goal, well, now at least you have a chance of achieving it. Um, and this, the thing about Starship is it is it is uh, the first rocket where uh, making life multiplanetary and you have, building a self-sustaining city on Mars is... Uh, is at least possible. Um, uh, it's still obviously an immense amount of work, but but it is the first rocket where um, that is success in, of, of, in making like multiplanetary is at least one of the possible outcomes. Yeah, um, I'm wondering if you're willing to venture a guess on when you'll be on the moon. I think pretty soon. Um, I'd be surprised if it's if, if it's longer than about three years uh, to be landing starships on the moon, um, and because uh, the rate of progression of starship is very rapid, um, you know we're we're hoping to do at least uh, another maybe five or six flights this year, and with each successive flight making significant improvements. Uh, so, I think we've got a, a decent shot of achieving um, full reusability of both stages, uh, the booster and the ship, uh, this year. Um, and if not this year, I think, you know, knock on wood, it's like, I think it's a very high probability of achieving full reusability uh, next year, which um, really is the fundamental breakthrough needed to make life multiplanetary. Um, I, for I those remember. That, for those, yeah. For, for, for those that, 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 that don't, don't know the rocket industry that, that well, that, that they may not be aware that, that that this is really the holy grail of rocketry is is full full and rapid reusability, um, because at that point you're, uh, you're you're really just constrained by your um, propellant costs, and Starship you know uh, almost eighty percent of the propellant is liquid oxygen, which is very low cost, um, and then the, the fuel is met there's sort of a little over twenty percent uh, fuel, which is methane, also the lowest cost fuel, so if you have um, uh, full and rapid reusability, uh, then um, your, your actual cost per flight of, of Starship, uh, even though it's it'll be capable of, um, we think ultimately 200 tons to uh, to orbit, uh, will be maybe on the two million dollars a flight. So you miss that? It's 200,000, you said. The, 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 the price of the fuel you said for Starship flight would be how much? Yeah, the, 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 I mean, we, if, if both states are um, reusable and w with without a refurbishment, then you, or without, you know, you'd have scheduled maintenance just like a, an aircraft. But uh, with, with, if, you, if you get to full reusability where there's no, um, no work required between flights, then you, 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 you then, um, the, the cost, you know, it's, it's really, uh, you know, the cost of propellant is maybe a uh, million dollars or less per flight. 